On today's episode, we do a railway roundabout. Hi guys, welcome to today's episode. Today we're going to show you some trips that we've been having. All aboard! On Heritage Day this year, Rovas Rail made history by running steam to Heidelberg again. Let's take a look. Heritage Day on the 24th of September is a public holiday in South Africa where we show off our heritage. Family and friends dress up in traditional attire and usually enjoy a braai. Rovos Rail organized a special trip of theirs in tribute to the Great Train Race of 1930. This race was between Bentley racing driver Wolf Bernardo and the famous Le Tra Bleu. However, our chase started a day before. We set out bright and early by making our way to Tuane Pretoria where we met up with our fellow YouTuber and Facebook friend Marvel Mklongo. Our first sighting was of GM Class 35s doing some trip work. Just outside Capital Park Yard, there is a triangle that allows Rovos Rail trains to enter the mainline from their site. Due to the current condition that the rail infrastructure in urban areas of South Africa is in, the train had to perform a few maneuvers. The train would travel to Dreamans Cup where it would stage overnight in preparation for the next day's race. From Capital Park we made our way to Burke Street in Mcleanier. The tubular track in this section was completed fairly recently in 2018. On the right over the wall is the Gau train right of way. Thereafter we went to the abandoned Fontana station. The train changed direction at Pretoria station. As can be seen, the rear diesel locomotive was uncoupled from the consist. Our next stop was just outside of Irene where we met another Facebook friend, Aidan McCarthy. We then had to chase through heavy afternoon traffic through Early Funds Fontaine to get to our next spot in Kempton Park. At Kempton Park we managed to capture the current answer to a bad situation, a shuttle train. These are normally hauled by GM Class 34s or in this instance GE Class 36 shunting locos. Shortly thereafter, the Rovos train came through at a loping pace. We then made our way to a very special spot, a place known locally as Yapi Sidrai. This spot is named after Yapi Tablanche, who is another Facebook friend and owner of the Facebook group Train Bekrepers Varelveit or Train Spotters Worldwide. You can hear in this shot, Om Yapi gets a special greeting from the loco crew. Om Yapi was a train driver and had a clear safety record of over 30 years. He was also a union rep. By now we were experiencing low light conditions. We made our last stop for the day at Germiston Yard, outside the old Germiston steam sheds, now used by Transnet Engineering. James took a few long exposure shots and then we called it a day. Join us next time for part 2 of our trip report. On a recent trip down to KwaZulu-Natal, we stopped in at Hilton to see what's happening. Hi everyone, today we're here at Hilton Station at the Hilton Steam Heritage Association. I'm with Grant Fryer who is a director. Say hi Grant. Hi everyone. It started back in around about 2011 through the, the local policing community forum. Uh, there was quite a lot of concern by the residents about the decaying site. It had been left abandoned, it was overgrown, there were vagrants on site, there was drugs being sold from site and things like that. And then they were trying to get Transnet to do something being Transnet's property. Discussions started happening and Transnet obviously didn't have the funds or whatever, so the community raised their hands and said, okay, we will undertake it as a community project with Transnet's blessing, and we will look at the feasibilities of restoring, cleaning up, getting rid of the vagrants, and is the right in the center at the heart of Hilton, so it's quite an important node in the surrounding communities and businesses. And the project basically started from there, and various residents as well as businesses started coming to the party, and we had work parties, clearing away the overgrowth, sanding down and cleaning up the buildings, and removing the vagrants and that from the site. We then uh, sat and drafted up a business plan uh, as to how to, because at that stage it was just volunteers, but obviously going forward we wanted to, to make it a sustainable process and ideas were tabled, whereby then we brought in supporting of local businesses and the, eventually the opening of the local businesses that are currently on site. 
we have the support of Transnet. We have various meetings with them and we are just progressing and taking it one day at a time. We have a number of locomotives that are on site that have just over the years been left and abandoned here. We've got two one classes, the one which falls under us and there's another privately owned one that was brought up here in 2018. It came from the sugar mill down on the north coast. We have a North British tank XERPM mines number five. There are two class H2s on site. The one is reasonable condition, the other one is in quite a poor condition. We have a class 19B number 1402. We have the 19AR696 and we have the class 15 AR. There's also the old Cowan Sheldon breakdown crane from Mason's Mill along with of the works trucks that they're quite badly deteriorated and are in plans for restoration. We finally have two short cattle trucks, one of which has now been occupied and a flower shop is being run from that one and we are in the process of doing repairs on the second cattle truck, the short, that will also then be utilized for a storage area by the gentleman that runs functions and plays etc in movie nights here. We also do have the little blue diesel funky. Uh, it's missing quite a number of parts. Uh, we have started the motor but uh, there are other components to that are missing. Yes, people can contact us. We obviously do welcome any help in terms of volunteering. So when it comes to cleaning trains, sanding down, undercoating, painting or whatever other work going forward. So the public are, are welcome to contact us. Going forwards, yeah, we are uh, very positive that uh, the next year we'll see uh, uh, a greater amount of development here at the station um, whereby we will do obviously as that progresses we will do public uh, uh, media releases on what is happening thanks Grant for having us here today uh, you're welcome it's great to have you here when you guys come past Hilton be sure to pop in for some awesome coffee recently we visited our dear friend Frank Graham and saw his marvelous layout here it is this is the story of my model railway layout. It encompasses the lounge and the two bedrooms of the apartment opposite the one in which I live. The apartment occupies 101 square meters, of which I estimate some 65 square meters comprise the layout itself. The kitchen, with its large amount of shelving and cupboard space, is used for storage. Large by any standards, this is a freelance layout in that the scenery is generic owing to my running South African, American, and German or Austrian trains, obviously never at the same time. The trains closest to my heart are the South African ones. When I was a boy growing up north of Johannesburg, my family would sometimes visit my mum's sister's family, who lived in the West Rand suburb of Discovery, now part of the city of Ruderpurt. They lived in Hoy Street, right next to the Cape Main Railway Line and from the earliest age I fell in love with the trains. Back in the 1950s, there were no freeways in the country, and everything went by rail. As a result, even Sunday traffic was hectic, and I couldn't get enough of it. Those were the days of the massive Class 15F locomotives, the ones with smoke deflectors and five-foot driving wheels, and the Garretts, which were articulated locos hauling both passengers and good trains to Bechuanaland and Rhodesia. Discovery is commemorated by a suburb of that name in the second room. Running next to the track is Hoy Street, complete with its sign. I have placed a small boy on the edge of the railway reserve. That's me, age 10, soaking it all up. The town of which Discovery is part is called Callanan for my relatives who lived in Discovery and each member of that family has a street named after him or her, with the appropriate sign. Everything on the layout is named for family and friends. The emphasis is on extremely fine detail, 
and there are nearly 2,000 figures dotted around the layout, each grouping telling a story and lending an enormous amount of animation to each scene. Detail goes down to plates of food on dining car tables, people enjoying the facilities of a lounge car, and flowers on a hillside with stalks made from toothbrush bristles, the only thing I could think of that would be thin enough to be in scale, and yet strong enough not to collapse under the weight of the coloured foam or flock posing as petals. The builder's yard, the tiniest detail being little hacksaws, chisels, spanners and the like in little open boxes. There are two double main lines dubbed east-west and north-south. The former is the longer of the two at some 64 metres, while north-south runs out at about 30 metres. There are two branch lines. One comes off the north-south line and climbs at a pretty stiff 4% gradient behind the storage tracks at the rear of Callanan, moving through a long tunnel before emerging high above Kendall Lagoon and traversing it on a wooden trestle before reaching the timber and lumber area on Brutor. Here is found an extensive plantation complete with firebreak. There are also a sawmill, a furniture factory and lumber storage area, each with its own dedicated siding. The area commemorates a TV serial in which I had the lead back in 1990, Timber, set in the eastern Transvaal. The second branch connects the industrial area of Douglas with Carlfield Yard, much of it running under the two cities which separate these areas. At least that was the way it was supposed to be. Unfortunately, the position of a third bridge over all the other bridges made it impossible, and that branch line has become two spurs, each ending on the banks of the River Gary. Then there are two extensive industrial areas where each industry or warehouse has its own siding or sidings. There are two fair-sized towns, a theme park, which is a Wild West town preserved for tourists, two large cities, both of which are complete, and a very large loco depot, including coaling, sanding and water facilities for steam, as well as roundhouses and turntable, there's diesel refueling and shed, and long storage lines. The layout is fully lit. Work has unfortunately slowed up because of my mobility problems. I'm also just not as young as I used to be. But a talented metalwork friend of mine has come to my rescue and converted an old typist chair on casters into a bum-scraping vehicle mere inches off the floor, which enables me to scoot around under the benchwork and do work I've been unable to contemplate for years, following a full knee replacement. The electrics remain extremely primitive, with four separate transformers running each of the two main lines, two for industrial areas, one for a branch line up to the sawmill, and two controlling the very large yard at Carlville and the turntable. The trackage has, however, been prepared for the block system, and the layout will remain a DC operation as it is too late and too expensive for me to contemplate a change. This last remark does not apply to the extensive tramway through the city of Douglas, owing to the city's two trams being completely incompatible with each other for DC running. I wish to emphasize that the layout is not exclusively my work. I've had wonderful support and assistance mainly from the late Bruce Owen, and also Roger Kennett, Dani Joubert, and Terry Hargreaves. Peter Hope helped too, and lent me equipment, whilst Carol Everett prepared the under-table curtains, which make the layout so much tidier. I will also not ever forget that my main mentor was the late and much-lamented Carl Peters, who helped set my standards, and to whom I will always be grateful. Well, that was our recent field trip. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe for more awesome content. The signals that proceed. The platform's clear. You, you may depart. depart.